All right, so let's talk about instrumentation now. So what we actually need for the Sims uh, technique. All right, so the, um, the chamber, uh, it has to be a vacuum chamber, just like we saw in XPS AES technique. So we really need an ultra high vacuum, so UHV. And again, if you don't remember, that was in the range of 10 to the minus 8, 10 to the minus 10 millibar or tor. Uh, they're pretty close to each other. Because those gas molecules in a chamber uh, that's not properly uh, at vacuum can scatter uh, these low energy um, electrons and, and ions that we have. Um, and again, um, also the surface uh, absorbs gas molecules in a very short time, and so that can uh, contaminate the uh, the surface. So we need the same conditions there. Um, also, similar to XPS and AES, we need uh, pumping um, to uh, get down to those levels. And so, uh, like we talked about before, turbomolecular and sputter ion uh, are preferred because there's no risk of contamination with oil uh, of the other types um, of pumps. So same, same uh, things are needed in terms of vacuum systems. Um, other things that we need that an SEM requires um, may be a little different. And so we do need a, a system uh, in order to create ions. And so this um, uh, has uh, multiple components in it. So we need an ion source, so something that yields us ions. We then need this wine filter. We'll talk about this in a second. And then we need um, deflectors, so something to um, move our ion beam. So. Um, the various components here, the ion source, it produces the ions uh, and it gives us these ions at a certain kinetic energy. So we typically need very high energy. The filter here uh, kind of purifies and rejects the any ions that we don't want that were produced by the source. So it kind of cleans things up. And then the deflector, this is what allows us to move the beam um, over the surface. And so that allows us to pick certain regions um, or uh, look at a, a wide array of positions. So we need to be able to move that, that position. All right, so let's look at some of the specifics here. So let's start with the ion sources. So ions, as you uh, hopefully are aware, are gaseous species, uh, and they can be produced either from uh, electron bombardment or from plasma ion sources. And so electron bombardment um, is very close to what it sounds like. Uh, we have a filament that's heated up and it produces electrons, and then we fire them at uh, neutral molecules that come in through an inlet. So these are gas molecules, something like argon. Um, and the interaction between those causes a uh, positive ion to, to form. And then we also have a repeller and an extractor plate, which essentially give us um, a uh, potential difference between those two and allow them to uh, go off towards the, uh, the analyzer. So that's one way. Uh, we can also use uh, dual plasma, plasmatron uh, ion source, which uh, basically is a uh, glass, uh, or sorry, a uh, gas comes in this uh, cathode, um, where there is plasma discharge, um, and then there's also an electrode uh, and an anode that basically extracts those um, charged species. Um, and so this is also another way we can do it. So let's kind of go a little bit more into the specifics. Um, I kind of uh, went over a little bit, but let's, let's dive in a little deeper. So the first thing we have is a neutral gas. It enters this inlet that you see back here in the back. Um, so those are neutral molecules. We then have the uh, bombardment from this, uh, the electrons coming off this filament. And so they're uh, through this electron trap uh, and the voltage applied here, they're basically targeted at these nu neutral molecules in the chamber uh, because they're accelerated towards the positive charge here. Uh, and that interaction will result in a positive ion that you see over here 
and um, through this repeller and the extractor plate, again, um, a um, in this case, uh, a negative charge um, is um, resulted, uh, and that directs the um, positive ions um, towards the extractor plate and through and on to the, the analyzer. Um, so this kind of ion source gives us what we'd call moderate brightness. And so we're in terms of brightness, we're using the same kind of terminology that we saw with electrons. So a large number of um, ions um, means that we have a larger brightness. And so this in this case, we have moderate. And so to quantify that, it's roughly in the order of 10 to the 5 um, amps per meter squared, because again, it's charged. And so we can use um, uh, amp amperage here. Uh, the dual plasmatron source, again, it creates a plasma uh, that we have, we basically have an arc, uh, and then we have a high pressure uh, neutral gas. Um, it could be something like oxygen. And so that high pressure gas uh, enters here, it enters the, uh, a cathode that's hollowed. Um, there is an arc that's generated between the cathode uh, and the anode here. And that's what uh, causes a, a plasma to form. And then that plasma flows through this kind of aperture in the anode. Um, and it's accelerated by this extractor here. And so this gives us um, a higher brightness. Uh, we're talking about 10 to the 7 amps per meter squared. And so this can obviously give us uh, more um, ions per area. Um, there are some other um, sources, um, such as this liquid metal ion source. Um, if you're familiar with um, uh, the FIB technique, we talked about that earlier. Um, FIB techniques often use this style of ion source. Um, and so how this works, uh, it produces a gallium or bismuth uh, ion. And it's similar in technique to the field emission guns that we talked about in electron microscopy. So basically we have this um, needle here and that needle is coated with a liquid metal uh, and it forms what's called a uh, Taylor cone here, um, uh, here at the bottom, which produces a very fine tip. If we kind of zoom into that, we can kind of see it over here. So the key here is we have to have a liquid metal. So that's why we're talking about something like gallium or bismuth, because it can coat this fine tip. Um, and then at the, uh, the tip of this uh, cone, uh, and again, this is a liquid metal that you see that's gray here. Um, basically, at this point, the really high electric field that we have from this extractor um, uh, electrode here or over here in the, the magnified view um, strips electrons and thus leaves us with a positively charged gallium and that uh, essentially flows from the tip uh, past the uh, extractor. So we use a really high uh, electric field on this very fine tip of this um, liquid metal source to produce ions. And this is a really good technique because it gives us the highest brightness of the techniques that we've talked about, uh, about 10 to the 10. And so you can see it's much higher than those other uh, techniques. And this, um, again, he, over uh, this is another diagram just kind of showing you a similar thing to over here. This is just a nicer picture of, of the liquid uh, metal that we see, but, but more or less we have a uh, filament um, and then liquid metal produced and then the uh, really high electric field strips off electrons and gives us um, this ion source. All right, so let's go into the next component that we saw after the ion source, and that was the wine uh, filter. And what that does is it separates out isotopes or impurity ions based on its mass. And so we use magnetic, or sorry, we use electric and magnetic fields to do this. So let's envision um, the ion coming in. Uh, so that's here. And what it does is it basically passes through 
these parallel plates. And this contains uh, perpendicular electric and magnetic fields. And so the B that you see here is the magnetic field. So this is basically the magnetic field that we see uh, applied from these parallel plates. And so the magnetic field interacts with the particle and uh, results in a different force on it. So if it's, um, so what happens here is that you see as it leaves these parallel plates, if it's a heavy ion, uh, it tends to uh, differentiate, or sorry, it tends to diverge from the straight path and go up. If it's too light, it will go down. And so we basically select the electric and magnetic fields such that the correct ion that we want, the correct mass, will go straight through the aperture that we have here. So we select this based on what we want. So those fields create a vertical force um, on an ion unless it has the given velocity. So uh, that can kind of translate to, to mass. So uh, lighter ones go below, heavier ones go up. And so this is how we kind of select out what we want um, with this wine filter.